Hello everyone, I hope you're safe and sound. So today I'm gonna cover the lecture for threads. All right, it's an easy lecture, so I hope we get through it real quick. So these are the learning objectives. Mainly you need to know the terminology for threads. That's very important. Uh, what are the thread forms? There are many forms of thread. We're gonna cover the common one. And then, yeah, here's the list, unified, metric, pipe thread, metric pipe thread, and then Acme thread, and then the buttress thread. Uh, how we make, how we draw threads. And then uh, in indications in the drawing, what do they mean? And then the details, which is again, kind of like the terminology, measure diameter, pitch, I'm going to touch upon tolerances, what do they mean, and then hand or the direction of the thread also. Okay, so well, we're going to talk about mainly five forms of thread. So we're going to talk about unified, the most common here in the US. Metric thread are coming more and more common, especially with metric drawings and metric product. Acme thread for power transmission. Again, butter thread for power transmission. Pipes have their own special type of threads because you want to seal, you don't want them to leak. So there's a taper pipe, there's the dry seal, and then there is the metric pipe uh, threads. All right, here's the terminology. Quite a busy, um, quite busy uh, slide. We'll try and go through it one by one. So the most the most important thing are not there's, honestly there's nothing the most important but let's start by the major diameter, which is the outside from here to here. That's the major diameter. And then, as the implies, if there's a major, there's a minor. So there's a minor diameter, which is from here to here. So if you look at the profile of any thread there is the root which is the bottom part so let me put the root in blue which is here and then there is the crest let me put it in in red which is um which is up here so i would say the major diameter is the distance between two crests and then using the same logic, let me put it in blue, the minor diameter would be the distance between two roots. Okay. And then if you subtract the major diameter from the minor diameter, you get the depth. So let me put this maybe in orange. So the depth is equal major minus minor and you would need to divide by two obviously because that would be on both sides okay and then the involute angle is the angle of the uh, thread there are many different versions for it the most common angle is 60 degrees but we will cover other angles and we'll explain why 60 also is the most common. So we talked about crest. We talked about the root. We talked about depth, major and minor, and the angle. Next is the pitch diameter. The pitch diameter is an imaginary diameter. You cannot see it. It doesn't exist. It's an imaginary diameter. You can measure it. There are ways to measure it. But it, it, it's not a physical thing that you can touch. And it's the average between both, the, ma the major and the minor diameter. And then the pitch, which is here, it's the distance between two consecutive roots or two consecutive crests. So it's the distance between two roots or two crests, you get the pitch, which is kind of like how fast your car is moving because the pitch is how much linear distance I move every turn. So when I turn my 
my my thread one turn I move linearly an amount this amount is called the pitch okay it's 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 in inches or in metric it's in in millimeters it's it's the linear distance the nut moves when you turn it one turn okay so if you want you're not to move slowly i can move use a very slow small pitch and then if i want my nut to move fast i can use a higher pitch i hope you guys understand and then axis is basically the axis the center of the circle the same exact features apply this is an external thread sorry this is an external thread here it's an internal thread and then you have the same logic we talked about the crest but here the crest becomes the root and the root becomes the crest so we flip them up here is the crest and here is the root pitch diameter the imaginary diameter the minor diameter between two will be two crests and then the major diameter will be between two roots and then we talked about the depths and the pitch all these remain the same the axis is the same and the involute is the same 60 degrees most common okay all right let's go to the next slide so here is a list of all the designations for uh, the threads so unified thread is kind of like the most common thread type and then in the unified thread you can have coarse which is if you guess i would say it depends on the pitch so a coarse pitch is a large pitch let me write in a different color so a coarse pitch so here we're talking about coarse pitch which is large pitch and then there is fine which is we'll say small pitch and then there is extra fine which is a very small pitch okay it's kind of like in the in all systems we're classifying the threads based on their pitch or based how fast the knot will move for one turn so unc is unified coarse unf is unified fine unef is unified extra fine then m is for metric threads okay and then there is acme threads okay then there is the acme c which is centralizing we're going to explain that and then there is the acme general purpose and then there is a subcategory called stub acme which is kind of like the short version but these are not based on the pitch this classification is not based on the pitch we'll explain another type is called the buttress thread and then a sub classification from is the push buttress these are also used in power transmission so these i would say everyday use And then these, maybe let me put it in red, power transmission. Kind of like when I'm like in the mill, what's driving your table in the X and in the Y is an Acme thread. Why an Acme thread? Because it has a lot of power carrying capacity it won't break easy okay and then the remainder is mainly for pipes so this is all this is pipe threads so here there is the national pipe thread and then this one is a dry seal the main difference between this one 
and this one is whether you can you have a sealant in between the bolt and the nut or the pipe and the, the two pipes the male and female or no and then there is the metric pipe thread it has three different categories into it or actually four different categories into it okay just to summarize everyday use we have coarse fine and extra fine based on the pitch and then we have the acme and the buttress thread which are used for power transmission and then we have pipe threads and then in the english system we classify them based whether you need a dry can you have a dry seal or you need a sealant in the pipe thread okay so here is a summary of all of the unified thread size so up to a quarter of an inch less than a quarter of an inch we name the uh, thread based on a numbering system from 0 to 12 so 0 is 0 0.060 1 is 0 0.073 and then and so on and so forth and eighths of an inch roughly is number five or actually it is number five which is 0.125 and then number 12 is shy of a quarter of an inch it's 0.216 and then when we're talking about a major diameter of a quarter of an inch everything else follows just the logic of the size of the major diameter okay all of these follow the major diameter all right next is we have three types of threads as we explained coarse fine and extra fine and not everyone has extra fine especially in the the smaller the thread gets it's kind of very hard to get into extra fine but uh, here this number 64 is not the pitch it's the number of threads per inch so here to calculate the pit the inch the pitch i'm sorry to calculate the pitch you basically get the reciprocal of this number so here literally i am dividing an inch into 64 divisions so my pitch would be 1 over 64th of an inch okay and here is for example my my pitch would going to be 1 over 32 of an inch and so on and so forth all right so as you can see for the same size i can have a coarse which is 64 and i can have even a finer thread which is 72. so for fine thread it's a high it's a more expensive doesn't really generally it's more expensive but there could be exceptions but you would need it for one example is if you're trying to seal something the more threads the more odds you, you get a better seal in the same amount in the same distance fine could be because of your limited in distance and you want to have a good grip so you would use a fine thread because there is more room for friction uh, that's it so that's unified the geometry of the unified thread looks like this it's a 60 degree angle okay which is kind of an isosceles triangle because then all the sides will be equal and it's kind of like easy to do to manage the math however it's not a perfect triangle we we trim that part of the triangle and we trim that part of the triangle the main reason we trim these parts is because these sharp edges are easy to break and they will break anyway and there are weak points and then when they break you're not getting a, a good shape so we decided to like make it looks like a trapezium like this okay this is the pitch which is what we just calculated in the previous slide also uh, everything is a function of the pitch so the height how high is that equation which is a function of the pitch and then all of these are a function of the height which is a function of the pitch so all of the geometry at the end of the day refer to the pitch here is the minor diameter which is the root 
and here is the major diameter which is here the crest let me write them down so the minor diameter this is the root and then the major diameter or the outer diameter which is the crest okay the pitch diameter is the imaginary line which is the average between both or actually not the average it's at that distance quarter of the height okay this is where exactly it is okay now we go to the metric system into the metric system the thread has a nominal size which is in millimeters so this is 1.6 millimeter to 2 millimeters 6 millimeter which is equivalent to roughly a quarter inch and then instead of putting the number of pitch per thread like in the english system we saw in this column 32 64 big numbers they save you the pain and they put the actual pitch not the number of threads per inch they put the pitch in millimeter so for example here is for m6 which is a six millimeter screw the pitch is one millimeter for an m8 it comes in two versions you can get a 1.25 millimeter pitch or a one millimeter pitch and it goes on till you get to a 30 millimeter which is two inches and a half roughly yes and then you get 3.5 millimeter pitch or two millimeter pitch all right so here we're at the acme thread uh it's used for transmitting mechanical motion as we say it has the nominal thread size and the number of threads per inch so here for example 16 is i divide the inch into 16 division for so the pitch here is going to be one over 16 of an inch it's uh the difference the main difference between the acme there's a lot but the the major difference is the angle here it's 30 degrees versus 60. so that change in angle allows more material in here more meat in here so it can handle more mechanical motion it can handle more load than a regular thread and here as we explained is the pitch which is that same exact guy okay next there is a stub acme thread which is kind of like a lighter version of the acme the the main difference is in the depth here the depth is half the pitch is half p you can look at it even here that's that's the that sorry not not this one not this one it's this one it's half p however in the stub acme thread the depth is much smaller is 0.3 p so for example if we have a 16 one of p equal one over 16 of an inch my depth in here is going to be one over 30 second in a stub acme the depth is going to be 0.3 multiplied by 1 over 16 which is going to be equal to let me grab a calculator it's going to be 0 0.018 of an inch and a 30 second is 0 0.0 three one so the depth of the thread is smaller in the stub all right okay so for the buttress thread again it's used for transmitting mechanical motion 
but it's optimized in one direction. So if I really need all of my force to be in one direction and I don't care, for example, I really need to tighten really hard, but I don't care about I'm tightening, that doesn't really matter. Then I would use the but buttress thread where the force is really strong in that direction, not as much in the opposite. And then you can arrange it, you can arrange or design your, your thread for different forms of push or pull, basically a mirror image. Um, same stuff. So this is the nominal size in inches, number of threads per inch. So the pitch is one over this. And then the angle here is 45 degrees. Okay. Versus 30. And everything is a function of the pitch as usual. A tapered pipe. So pipes have a tapered, which means at an angled, angled, um angled thread it's at three quarter inch per foot which is one degree and 47 minutes okay the whole idea of taper is the more you tighten the more the threads are engaged and the more you're sealing okay uh, the main important thing is the nominal pipe size has nothing to do with the actual diameter so of an eighth of an inch pipe is actually 0.4, not even close to an eighth of an inch. A one inch pipe is an inch 0.3. And then the number of threads per inch is the same idea. To calculate the pitch is one over 27 here, for example. Okay. The dry seal is the same exact logic However, the design of the thread itself is different that you do not need a sealant. It does not require a sealant. So the geometry of the thread here is different that does not require a sealant. But the same logic, number of threads per inch. And then the nominal size is way much more different than the actual. So a quarter inch is actually half. Uh, an inch is 1.3 and so on and so forth. So a metric pipe is the same logic. It's tapered. It comes in three types. External tapered, internal tapered, and internal straight. Uh, so the angle here is 55 versus 60. The Taper angle is the same, 1 degree and 45, 47 minutes. Okay, now on actual drawings, threads appear in three different ways. The first one is simplified, which is the most common, schematic, and then a detailed. The main problem with drawing a thread, it's, it's very time consuming and exhaustive to show all the details. So that's why the simplified is the most common. So that's the simplified is basically we put a hidden line here and then an oblique line in here and that would be it that's it as simple as this it's 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 a hidden line and then you would use an oblique line that's it nothing else and that says that this is a thread that's all what you need uh, and you can use it for external internal threads if then there is a chamfer you can show it this way or you can show it this way these are the chamfers but not much more a schematic presentation shows a little bit more of details. Um, you would use staggered lines as it shows in here, and then you can use it for internal feature or, or external features. Um, then the detailed presentation, which is even 
a lot of work, especially back at the time of manual drawing. I mean, nowadays, especially with the parametric CAD, it's just a choice, a click of a button. But again, as far as even printing, I mean, it's a lot of detail for no reason. I mean, nobody's going to go and, and measure anything. So it shows everything. That's the detailed presentation. Uh, you can mix and match. There's no problem here. It's the same part you're showing here. The detailed, the simplified. So this is the detailed. This is the simplified. And then here the schematic. At the same exact drawing. It doesn't matter. That's fine. And then just a heads up. These are all metric. So this is an M4. That means a four millimeter nominal diameter hole. And then this is an M12, which is a 12 millimeter hole. And then times one, that's the pitch, which is one millimeter. And then here is M48, that's a 48 millimeter diameter. And the pitch is four millimeters. Um, the taper for pipes, usually it's exaggerated because of 1.1 degree and uh, 47 minutes is not really going to appear much on the drawing. So it's exaggerated on a, to be shown. Usually three degrees, you can visually figure it out. Um, and then that's the way you can usually it's shown, shown simplified. All right, dimensioning a thread, you can dimension up to two ways. This is the actual use for thread size, which is up to that edge. But also you might want to, sometimes you might want to put that dimension because for some reason you don't want the extra unuseful thread to go for long distance. So you might specify both. But the most common is this one, which is the useful thread when you're getting full engagement on the nut. Okay, we'll skip these. Okay, so thread forms usually we do not dimension and tolerance them. Uh, if you want to look up the details, usually you open up a standard. But we show some general tolerances and we show the thread size. So, but let's talk first about tolerances. What are tolerances? For any thread, to function, there has to be a gap between the male and the female. This You always need this gap. Or else, I mean, the thread will not turn. How big is this gap is the tolerance class. You can have a very large ga gr gr uh, gap, and then it's going to be an easy sliding, easy to assemble bolt on a nut, or you can have a very small gap which is going to kind of like a tight seal so just to show this i made this cartoon that shows yep you can see the gap is getting smaller let me erase this let's do it again the gap is getting smaller okay so and then here we'll cover this in detail but for now all what i want you to know that there are classes depending on how big the gap is. These are the English version of classes. So each class has a name. So either H1 or H2 and then up to H6 depending on how big the gap is. Okay. So here is an example of how we label a thread. A quarter is the nominal size. 20 is the number of threads per inch and then usually that's enough that's most what most people use however you can add more if needed which is you can add whether this is a coarse or a fine thread okay like this and you can add the tolerance class okay and then there's this A and then this B, which is whether this is external or internal. 
the idea of external and internal kind of like it, it ends up self-explanatory but you can just add it so the optional items are what i just said is you can write down un unc unf or unef for extra fine this is optional also you can say the tolerance class of fit one two three this is also option and lastly as an option also you can put an a for external or a b for internal and then we all all threads are assumed to be right-handed right handed if else then it becomes left-handed it has to be written so you know that it's a left-handed thread okay metric same idea we put an m and then an eight okay this is a must and then the pitch is optional this is the pitch which is optional here Okay, and then this is the tolerance class in the metric system. It comes in two letters and in two uh, numbers. Okay, so same idea. This is the nominal pitch is an option because there's standard pitches in metric. You can't make any pitch you like. And then that's the tolerance class. All right, this is the... Uh, metric tolerance system it's uh, very summarized and condensed in this uh, slide i just want you to know for now that you need two letters and two numbers for the tolerance classes in the metric we'll cover them in detail later all right for the acme thread then we have the outside diameter we have the pitch okay and then as an option whether you can write down acme all right I think you must have because how would i know you would need an acme because how would you know that it's something else so and then the option is the tolerance class so this is option and then uh this is option the tolerance class but you would have to show that it's acme you have to write acme because people would mistake it for a regular thread here is the buttress same idea nominal diameter pitch you have to write whether it's a buttress or a push buttress so people know the direction and then the tolerance class is option the taper threads okay usually you write down the nominal size the threads per inch and then you need to show to write down what type whether it's a seal or a dry seal so this is not optional nothing is optional in the taper by threads the dry seal same idea but you said of npt you put nptf and then the th the nominal size and the uh threads per inch metric pipe threads same logic you would show the designation what type of thread is it okay and then you would show the size so this is the size and that's the metrics standard okay here he's basically saving you the pain he's telling you i want a quarter 20 course and then he's telling you to do it this way he's giving you this is i'm sorry this is the tolerance class he's telling you intentionally to tap it but then he's telling you to pre-drill with that diameter and use a tap drill these are optional uh, items that's it